Hey everybody, today we're taking a look at Max for Live. Max for Live is something that sets Ableton apart. It's a visual programming uh, system where people are able to create their own effects and instruments inside of Ableton um, to create um, their own content essentially and then uh, allow other users to download that content. So Ableton obviously make all of their inbuilt effects, but you've also got this programming environment where users can also create content for Ableton. So Max for Live um, devices actually expand the capability of Ableton quite substantially. Um, and for example, you're not able to use an LFO and um, sim simple LFO device and map its parameters to something. Ableton doesn't come in built with something like that, but Max for Live actually implements that and offers you a, a device that'll do it. So I'll show you that. But first, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to the website and I'm going to show you where you can actually go to to download um, devices for yourself and you can scroll through all of the devices available and find something that's actually interesting to you. So let's jump over there and have a look. So this is uh, maxforlive.com and here you can click device library and you're able to see all of the devices that users have made and then upload it onto the website. So we can have highest rated selected so that we see the, the best essentially um, devices and we can go all and it gives us a huge list of um, devices. And you can see what we've got here is uh, some sort of sequencer. We've got a polyrhythmic sequencer or a rhythm builder. We've got a step sequencer. We got, um, not sure what this is. It's for an APC 40 Mark II. Um, we got a tape stop device, launch, pra launch pad, drum sequencer. So we got all sorts of um, different devices and we can download these devices and then we can install them into a folder on our computer and then we can drag them into Ableton and use them. So what we can do is we can come over here and we click, click on, um, maybe we could get a sample glitcher and maybe we can use this tape stop. So if we go download device, downloads down here, we can click show in the folder that it downloads to. We've got it here. I can go ahead and I can copy that I can come over to my documents, I can come to my Max Devices folder, I can right click and I can paste and drop that in there. Now this is a folder that I made um, and then I'll show you how to get that folder to show up inside of Ableton. So inside of Ableton you can go add folder and then you can navigate to say documents wherever you put it and then click your Max Devices folder and go select folder. Um, I've already done that and here it is. So you can see I've got a couple of different um, devices in already. So let's have a look at what they do. So I'm going to go to samples, I'm going to go to future phonic samples, um, and I'm going to get some synth lines. So we'll go, we'll grab that guy, we'll drag and we'll drop it into Ableton and I'll just delete these other channels. We can come to the max devices and we can grab the tape stop and put it on there. And let's um, press play and then click the tape stop. Cool, so that is their tape stop device, that's pretty sweet. Um, you can sync it to beats so you can make it uh, actually work in time. So let's say four beats. Cool, so that's one device. Um, how about this polyrhythmus? Um, let's drop it on its own channel. It looks like it needs to be on its own channel. Um, and I have no idea how this works. So if I can't get it working quickly, then I'm just going to abandon it. Um, this one takes a little bit of time to load, so uh, I might skip it along. Okay, here it is. It's loaded up. Um, and I'm not sure how this works at all. So let's just quickly stumble around with it. We'll draw in a MIDI note. We'll solo it. Um... And maybe I need to put um, samples in there or something. 
Um, but either way, uh, there's an example of how you pull that device into the channel and then uh, mumble absolutely clueless as to how it works. Uh, and then finally, we can use the LFO. Um, we can go ahead and go uh, audio effects and we could get an auto filter. We could chuck it on there. And then we could map the LFO to control the filter. And then we can set the filter and then we can press play. And then we can change the parameters of the um, LFO here. We can change the rate. We can sync it to the time of the track. Change the phase of it, um, offset it, do all sorts of stuff inside of this. This is a, LFO is really handy. I use this a lot. Um, we could then go ahead and grab another LFO, and we could map to the resonance. And then we could get another effect. So we could go um, ping pong delay. Great. And we've already made our um, own effect and we've started making a little bit unique to us because we've put some uh, variation on it and some automation. We're getting a little bit creative and we could keep going down that rabbit hole and expand that idea out until we had something that was really cool. Um, but that is a little bit of an introduction to how Max for Live de devices work um, and how you can start using Max for Live devices inside uh, your uh, music. So let me know what your favorite Max for Live devices are in the description below. I'm really keen to check out more uh, and I'll see you guys again soon in another video. Thanks for watching.